Hello, and welcome to Upside Down Crypto. Do you think plotting on the command line interface is complicated? Because it's actually not, it's, it's quite simple. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate why migrating from the GUI to the command line interface is much easier than you think. I'll also give you a few basic demonstrations and a few pointers on why you should migrate or think about migrating to the CLI or command line interface. So let's get started. So here we are in our Chia GUI application. It's very easy to use, as you probably know. I have other videos explaining how you can use this GUI. So this is my test machine, and I have one plot plotting right now. And if you come here to my Process Explorer, this is a very nice piece of tool, by the way. It's free, you can download it, it's really cool. So this is that specific plot, which is plotting. It's in phase one, that's why it's quite CPU intensive. So if I right click, go to properties and here in the command line section. So if I go to the image tab and then under command line, you see there's a little command here. Plot create minus K minus N or dash N minus T dash two test plot dash D dash B dash U dash R. So, so what are these? Basically your GUI is sending a command line and i think this is a python file i'm not too sure and this is actually the exact command you need on your command line to plot what you're just plotting here so let me show you this is the official chia command line reference and as you can see we have all these in this little command here so if i go back and i add a plot for example this one here, that's the minus K or the dash K. This one here is the dash N. Then if I scroll down, this one here is the dash T. And this one here is the dash 2. This one here would be the dash D. So if I scroll down here in, in the reference, you see dash T is a temp file. Dash 2 is the second temp file. Dash D is the final destination for your plot. Then dash R is the number of threads. So if I scroll up here, then we have a number of threads and dash B would be your RAM and etc. So the GUI just makes your job easier. But at the end of the day, what's happening really is all this is going through a script, which acts as a command line, kind of just putting it in simple terms. And then you create and then that script gets passed to your computer and blah, blah. But you could actually copy and paste that into your command line and you could plot using the command line instead of using the GUI. The GUI has a lot of issues as you probably know. It keeps crashing, it's difficult to delete plots and there's a lot of other problems and challenges. If you start using the command line interface, you have a lot of possibilities. My aim of this video is really for you guys to get started plotting just one plot on the command line. So let's come here for example. I am plotting another plot on the command line and it's going well if anything happens i can just cancel this then i can go back and delete the files manually and everything's independent if i'm plotting 10 plots then i will have 10 command line windows and if one of them crashes it's not going to affect the other ones this is really good so let's try to plot one in our command line interface first i want you to open your command line cmd and i want you to navigate to your chia app data folder so that would be under your users, then your username, and then app data, local, chia, blockchain, then your app version number, resources, app dot, asa dot unpack, the and slash daemon. So we do that, then we're in the directory. You can actually find this through your explorer. Come here, go to C, users, Martin. Actually, the app data file is hidden. So to see the app data file, you need to run and then percentage app data. I think this is how you access the app data folder. Local, chip blockchain, app 1.1.6, the latest version currently, resources, this folder here and here. We navigate here because this is where all the code happens and where your command line interface 
is communicating with the software. So we'll do that on the command line. And now we are here exactly. Now let's go back to that bot. So if we go to Process Explorer and I find that code here, let me just copy that code here. Don't worry about dash A because you, you wouldn't need that. And just copy all that code here. And then paste it here. Get rid of that dot exe. So you have a command like this cheer plot create dash k32 dash n1 so we're doing one then dash t e test plot i'm going to change that to test plot one and i'm going to create the test plot one folder here so let's go here e and i create a folder called test plot one Test plot one. There you go. Then I'm gonna come here and create another folder called test plot one. And you can see this folder is also empty. This is the external hard drive where the farming happens and where the plots are stored. And this is the temporary hard drive. Okay. So coming back here, we have test plot one. And also E test plot one. And D is also test plot one. And then RAM, two gigabyte almost, then two threads. Okay. So if I press on return or enter, now the plotting is starting to happen. So to prove to you guys that this is actually plotting right now, I'm just gonna to go to the temporary directory, the directory we just made, and you can see all these temporary random files being created right here. So the plotting is happening right now, and if anything happens, if it crashes, you just go and delete these files and you just do it again. So this is happening right now, and I'll just go back here. Let me put these two side by side so you see what's happening. So what happens when we type in cheer plots create dash k32 so dash k k32 is this part here so we're selecting the size of the plot then dash n1 so how many plots then dash t we're telling our command line where's the temporary drive and where's the second temporary drive which is the same in this case minus d is the destination folder and dash b is the number of ram dash b is the maximum ram dash u is the number of buckets 128 is recommended and dash r is the number of threads these are the minimum commands you need in order to really plot your plots in the gui if you click on create plot the same thing happens as what happened just here in the command line as you can see it's super super simple i didn't need to insert any public keys I didn't need to insert any private keys because you've already set everything up. You have your wallet here. You're already logged in your wallet. Everything's there. I mean, it's really easy to use, okay? This is just for demonstration purposes, obviously, and there's more to it than this, but I just wanted to show to you guys how easy it is to get started on the command line interface. If you found this video useful and you would like to know more about plotting using the command line interface, then comment below and I'll make more in-depth videos on how to plot using the command line. And I'm going to talk about importing your private keys, public keys, pooling and farming on a different machine and those kind of stuff using the command line interface. I can also cover on how to do command line interface in parallel, how to do auto scheduling so you don't need to add plots manually so there's kind of a, like a infinite loop where you can just keep plotting without needing to keep adding plots how to optimize your plots how to use all these third-party libraries to make plotting easier on the command line interface you have to remember that the GUI is just that it's just a GUI you don't have too many third-party apps but when it comes to the command line interface there's so many things you could automate that you can't do on the GUI 
But a lot of people are scared to get started on the command line interface. They're like, oh, coding. No, it's quite simple. It's very, very simple. So I just made this video for you guys to understand it's not difficult. And just go and do your first command line interface plot right now. It's really easy. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing. It's been scientifically proven that my subscribers have better chances of winning a Chia coin than non-subscribers. So yeah, do that. And till the next video, Crypto out.